Greetings once again. Here we are, our evening terabyte to, to encourage each and every one of you that have been going through some uh, uh, pressure points or some spiritual uh, stretching or some personal uh, conquering of the soulish realm, the carnal realm <coughs> that the spirit, uh, that the scripture speaks about. Um, Let's see, I believe we started this terabyte uh, last week, then uh, Sabbath, we ended up teaching a little bit more of uh, Athena and how she was such a uh, spiritual, perverted, pagan goddess that most of uh, the Roman, Greco uh, communities back in the days of Yeshua, Jesus, when he walked the grounds, this is what he was dealing with. And then he left and gave power unto his fivefold ministry, the ascension gifts, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the fivefold ministries as you would, you and I would, you know, use the terminology. But one of the things that I was seeing that Sheliak, Saul, who was really Paul, never changed from Saul to Paul. It just depends how, what, what uh, mindset, whether it was Greek or Hebrew or uh, Aramaic, because even with that had a different mindset, how you viewed things. And so as I was reading and studying it, and I was being held captive in certain things that I was seeing because as a minister, as a teacher of the kingdom, and that's the gospel of the kingdom is a whole different than the gospel of the church and the gospel of uh, denominations and the gospels of men. Uh, for true to the gospel of the kingdom, then we're going to promote and go all the way back to reformation to where the father and the son were one. And if you go back all the way back to the beginning, better sheet in the beginning was the word in the word in the beginning. Okay, all the way back to Genesis. Um, and what's interesting, as I began to see and hear in my spirit, I was challenged to look at you know charity out of First Corinthians thirteen, and uh, out of the gifts, the fruit of the spirit. And uh, some of the Reformation brothers, like Martin Luther, that came against the Catholic entity, uh, a lot of the terminology that we use today was actually fostered by Martin Luther through the Catholic diocese, Constantine being the emperor, the one that called the shots, the one that uh threatened those that wouldn't come on his side when they were in the midst of changing rulership by who sat on the throne and so what's interesting if you even take time out and read and get into the the flow of thought context 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 Saul the Sheliak that's Hebrew for an apostle he writes but I was reading and here's the verse that i want to bring to you in second king 17 17 <coughs> it says and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire <coughs> and use divination and enchant enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of yahuwah to provoke him to anger Therefore, Yahuwah was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. <laughs> also, Judah kept not the commandments of Yahuwah, their Elohim, but walked in the statues of Israel, which they made. <laughs> which they made. Now, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this. Really, you're not. And please don't hold me accountable because you'll heap 
coals of fire upon your head. And I'm not saying this because I got a vendetta against everybody and anybody. I don't. This stuff is working on me too. And the closer we get to our full maturity, to the manifestation of the Godhead, to the manifestation of our Heavenly Father, because He wants to manifest through the, and I'll use the King James term, Godhead bodily, okay? This is why I'm using it, because I'm teaching it. But we should get away from using God, okay? I mean, if you're teaching it, then it's fine, because we know, and I know, and you know, that it's a descriptive term, the terminology, Wait till you see and hear. We can't. This is just the opening up of a spiritual window. Malachi says this to you and I. Malachi ends in chapter 4, Malachi. And yet, these in the book of Kings, these children, which is a genealogy that is connected to the prophets which are fathers, so from the father to sons, from the fathers to daughters, they decided to move and walk away from the commandments of Yahuwah Elohim, and they began to lead themselves after the commandments of Israel, which were man-made, and Israel had rabbis, and Israel had prophets. Matter of fact, I'll give you the modern term, prophet, priest, and king was the apostle the prophet and the teacher. Prophet, priest, and king were the apostle, prophet, and teacher. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. I believe it's 12, 20. Let me go real quick over here and I'll get it because I know it's 12. I know it's 12. 12, 28. I believe it's Romans. No, Corinthians 12. Either 10, 28 or 12, 28. 1 Corinthians let me, I'm, I'm turning there, I'm going quickly because this is our terabyte, so it's not a long, uh, drawn out revelation, it's just something that you, yep, there it is, uh, 28, and Elohim Yahuwah had set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healing helps governments diversities of tongue, different languages, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. <laughs> okay, you got to desire this. You can't come into a, a greater spiritual understanding, and I'm not acting like I've got it and, and I'm holding on to it because there's other men that I subject myself to. Uh, I call them mentors. I call them fathers to the degree of my adoption. That's why the father gave us a spirit of adoption that we could all call on him, Abba, father. But here's the kicker. There's always an underpending truth or lie that you have to study out because Abba is a Greek term. Abba is a Greek term. I'll say it one more time. Abba is a Greek term. And because we've used it and some of us that are scholarly have used it, so we take it for granted. Hey, well, I don't have to study the scripture. It's true. There it is in scripture. Paul said it. So now let me read to you again 2 Kings 17, 17. And I want you to see how the chaos, the dysfunction of the body of Mashiach or the body of Christ, it's in disarray. And Lazarus was called by Yeshua Messiah and said, Lazarus, come forth. When he came forth out of the womb, out of the cave, the people had to pull on the grave clothes and he was being unwind from what he was wound up in. Unwind to what he was wound up in. Look at my hand, unwind it. So we're being unwind from the past that has wound us up to believe a lie. Okay, 
So with that, just bear with me. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yah to provoke him to anger. Therefore, Yahuwah was very angry with Israel, removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of Yahuwah, their Elohim, but walked in the statues of Israel, which they made. And Yahuwah rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam a son of Nebit king, and Jeroboam drove Israel from following Yahuwah and made them sin a great sin. What was the sin in simple terms? If you're just following what he, what he wrote, what the prophet through the book of Kings wrote, because these were prophets that the kings subjected themselves and went in prayer and said, prophet, tell me what is Yahuwah saying? And he would tell them. So they, it says that they sin greatly, a great sin. Well, what do you think today we're doing? We don't have, we don't even mention. We don't even mention his name, his true name, Yahuwah, or yod Hey wah Hey. We've allowed ourselves once again to find something that's a trigger point and we we find great solace, great peace from it. But according to the prophetic word here, he's telling us, man, you done, uh, you made a, a, a sin, a great sin in the sight of Yahuwah as a nation. Okay? Now catch the present truth. We have men that ran for office of the highest order in the United States of America. One did what he thought was correct and the people rebelled over it to the point that they went upon themselves and took authority upon themselves and they went and crashed into what we would call the house, <laughs> the White House, where delegates gathered together to make critical decisions that would affect the country and the people of the United States of America. And until the changes come, uh, we won't find solace. So here at H2HDI, we ask you to hit the like button, hit the response, the comment, Give us some insight on how we could help to search out a matter because you know in Proverbs uh, 25 and 2, there's a verse there that becomes our foundational verse on how to conduct ourselves when we're trying to restore truth. And he said, a true worshiper must worship me in spirit and truth. So the, the, the truth of the matter is the word has to become flesh for it to be truth in you and I. Okay, so now let's go, since we read this, verse 20, and, and Yahuwah rejected all the seed of Israel and, aff and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent, for he rent Israel from the house of David. So he took them out. He took them out because David was to have the seed through his line. So he removed, hallelujah, he rent Israel that was not following Yah, wow. nor the ancient steps of Yah. They were making and choosing their own will to choose their own path. He comes to them and he says to them, look at this uh, in verse 22, for the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them. Ah, Father, thank you. I repent if there's anything here that affects my wife, Josh, Robert, uh, all the rest of the sons and daughters, uh, uh, Justice, Jaden, uh, Jordan, little Robert, uh, men and women that are connected to me uh, that have been from the past, from the ancient of days to the present. 
I ask you that you would remove any stain or any judgment from the third to fourth generation. We remove ourselves from what false Israel thought was right in their own sight. Now go with me to Romans. Hallelujah. We're going to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Come on, family. Turn with me because I only got a few more minutes. There, uh, Romans 8, chapter 8. Uh, 8 of Romans, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yeshua Mashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, now watch. In the old covenant, the father was a spirit. The father manifested in types and shadow as a cloud and a pillar of fire. <clears throat> Okay, that was a type and shadow of the father and son in relationship. Do you follow me? Okay, so now he's saying to you and I, Romans, Paul an apostle, a sheliac in Hebrew, he's taking us back through scripture and he's saying to this, there's therefore no more condemnation to them which walk, okay, which are in Mashiach Yeshua, or Christ Jesus in the King James Version. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Mashiach has made me free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> from the law of sin and death. Now watch this. If you go back to chapter, chapter 7 verse 14. For we, not, for we know that the law is spiritual. But I'm carnal sold, sold under sin. Paul had to make shifts in his thinking because he was standing and saying, we don't have to live under the law no more. But when it came to him after Romans 6, 7, and 8, he realized, wait a minute, the law is not carnal, I'm thinking cardinal. And I have to change my carnality because I'm, I'm, I'm in pursuit for truth, but I'm fulfilling the same sin that Israel did. Israel said, we don't have to serve or obey the commandments of Yahuwah. We can go ahead and conduct ourselves and live right and upright according to the scriptures. If we just, <laughs> if we just train them in our own school of thought. Why do you think we got so many denominations? Because each one fell prey to the different gods. Oh, that's why if you got to go back to Sabbath and last week's and tie them all together and hear the messages, because we're bringing, yeah, we're bringing insight to the Athena spirit, which is where we get our intelligentsia. Okay, so let me read on. Hallelujah. Back to verse uh, chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Okay, now 7 says the carnal. Now 8 says the flesh. <laughs> my, 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 my. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law my, 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 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you're moving in the realm of the spirit, you're fulfilling the law, the commandments of righteousness, because according to the scripture, we were to walk out in his righteousness. Okay, not our own, because our own rights, according to Isaiah, is as 50 rags. But he said his righteousness, because there was an exchange when you came into your born again and born from above, above encounter with your uh -huh, heavenly father, Yahshua Mashiach, or Yah, Yah, Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey, the four letter tetragrammaton that speaks of the name that is above every name. This is why the son and the father were one because when the son came into his full maturity, he took on the name of the father. Oh, my goodness. That's why the son said, Father, I gave him your name and I didn't lose not a one. Father, make them one as we are one. Well, what made them one and what made the son one? The name. That's why he said in the book of Hebrews, I'm going to go ahead and 
write it in their minds and in their heart so that no man would be without knowing or learning the name of Yahuwah. Every neighbor will know. And you'll find that in the book uh, of Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. You've got to read that. But right now we're here in verse chapter 8. Let me read another. That the righteousness of law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they do mind the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and shalom. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahuwah, for it is not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. So Paul made a distinction of the carnal mind. Oh my goodness, let me. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahuwah against God, a descriptive term. <coughs> Make it personal. Since you married him from Sinai back in Exodus. Since you married him back in Mount Sinai out of the book of Exodus. He came to give you the proposal, the marriage covenant. He gave you, oh my, my I feel the presence the Father was wanting you to live a righteous, happy life of obedience to his righteousness and commandments. And here Paul says, listen to me, the only reason why I came to you and made you think that the law was carnal because I was thinking from a carnal position. I was thinking from my heritage, my breed, my DNA, oh, a Jew, I was a top of the Jews. Yeah, a Nazareth, I was a studier of the Nazareth way. I never met him physically, but I met him on the road of Damascus. I had a rhema word fill my spirit, man. But what did Paul say to you and I through the scripture? He said, listen to me. He got my, he apprehended me, he got my attention, and he spoke to me in the Hebrew tongue. I know you don't believe that, that's why I'm ready to show you a verse. I believe that you should see it, if you're with me, the book of Acts, hallelujah, chapter 9, and then go over to, uh, hallelujah, chapter 26, okay, and chapter 9 is the beginning of his theology, the beginning of how he attributed his encounter with Yahuwah Mashiach on the road. Okay, now 25, he repeats himself and watch. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. <coughs> then Paul stretched forth his hand <laughs> and answered for himself. Oh boy, if you guys only can hear me. The hand represented the fivefold ministry that Paul had to subject himself to so that he could learn the proper ways to lay foundation because he was building on the foundation that Moses laid, that Adam laid, that Enoch laid, that Noah laid, <laughs> oh, Isaac laid, Jacob laid, the 12 sons laid laid, Joseph laid, Benjamin, Ephraim, all them in scripture, okay, now watch closely, he says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, mm -hmm. the religious leaders that knew Torah, that knew the commandments, that knew how to prostrate themselves before the Almighty, how they would wash and speak of their days of sanctification in the front of the peasants of the poor. If you remember the one poor man would beat his heart and say, Father, I'm a sinner. And the other, oh, Father, I thank you that I fast. Thank you, Father, that I give all that I have. But yet he had a little bag of gold hidden on the side. He didn't give it all. He kept some. This is why we had to go through the strong teaching from a Sheliac. That's why he said, come on, I can't stand these poor, grudging givers. You've got to be 
cheerful. You got to be joyful. You got to know that he gave his life so that we could just trade our, hmm, our finances, our mites. Okay, now verse three, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions where are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most strenuous sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. <laughs> Talking about a Pharisee, he said, I lived like a Pharisee. I was so religious I baptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Buddha, uh, uh, Charity, Zeus. See, Paul knew all of them. That's why he mentions it in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. If he didn't experience them, he would have never mentioned them. And he goes on and then he says, oh, watch this, which knew me from the beginning. Verse 6, and now I stand and am judged. For the hope of the promise made of Yahuwah unto our fathers. He didn't even mention the promise made to him. He said unto, unto Yahuwah and our fathers. Why? Because he was staying submitted to Torah. Oh my God, I know it's hard for you, but you got to see this. Paul wouldn't stray away from the commandments. He loved Torah. And watch, unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving Yahuwah day and night hope to come for which hope say King Agrippa I am accused of the Jews. He's coming to King Agrippa because this King Agrippa cared and knew about Yahuwah. Ooh, come on family. This is why Paul brought it so eloquently with conviction and persecution on his heel. They wanted to kill Paul. Because he was bringing simple spiritual understanding. If you love me, keep my commandments. Man, in 1 Corinthians 5, he talks about the Passover and keeping the first fruits and all this. He was going back to the Torah, Leviticus 23. Okay, let's read on right here. Verse 9. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, verse 8. For why should it be taught a thing inc incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Okay, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Contrary. He had, remember, he got a letter to go out and kill all them that were holding house to house ministries on Sabbath. That's when they were holding it. Because he hadn't risen from the dead to establish Sunday. So here Paul has a revelation of what took place. And he's seeing everything taken back to Torah. Next verse. Hallelujah, family. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. He's talking to the Nazarene. He's talking to them that were holding Torah. He had a letter, a governmental letter. He had an assignment to go and kill all them that cared for Torah. So he goes, and I published it, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, he, I mean, he's mad. I know we just read the English term and he's mad. No, Paul was so mad, he probably killed and dragged some of the ones that were holding synagogue, come on, rituals, traditions, and customs of Yahuwah in their home. He was dragging them down, probably had them all chained, and he was exhibiting them and, and was probably saying by example, not by mouth, if you're serving that God, this is what you're going this is the intention that you're going to have. The intent of my heart is to drag you back to the king's palace, okay? <laughs> Jeez. And I punished them often in every synagogue, compelled them to blaspheme and exceedingly mad against them. I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Strange cities. Come on, family, you're a city. 
whose builder and maker is Yah, who has 12 foundational gates into the city, who we call the mother of us all, Jerusalem, who is descending from above. This is the city that Paul's referring to that Abraham was told to search and keep, <laughs> keep heading forward and look for a city whose builder and maker was Yah. Okay, next verse and I'm done. Whereunto as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven about the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So there was a whole lot of different pricks around in that day. And there's probably a whole lot of them today that come against the truth and not don't even want to associate and search the scripture to see. But here in 1 Corinthians 8, back to 1 Corinthians, I'm not even going now. I'm just showing you that we're going to go through that and we're going to show you and I'm going to break it open because you got to see these spirits. You got to see these now as touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. Okay? Charity edifies. But when I show you the word charity is part of, oh my goodness, part of the love, sisters, you're going to blow your mind because here Paul begins to address Athea and Athalia. And all the other hordes of gods and lords and many other gods. Until we see each other again, I pray that you come back and get filled with more spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock. The three watches. You want wisdom? Pray at 9. You want knowledge? Pray at 12. You want to understand? Pray at 3. And when you pray, you can just say a simple prayer. Father, I need your wisdom. Boom. Because that's the cycle that the Father taught the Son. And that's why he would go aside from the group and pray unto his Father for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. May your eyes be open until we get together again on our terabyte to learn more about the things that we've been fighting that we cannot see with our natural eyes. Shalom to all of you. We love you here at H2HDI. Pray about coming back, telling a friend. We need to learn what we're about to step into until we see each other again. Lila Tov. <laughs>